Every four computers now have primary control of critical vehicle functions. All right, everyone, welcome to today's ASRG webinar. But before we get started, I'd like to tell you a little bit about ASRG and get some of the legal stuff out of the way. ASRG is a nonprofit organization founded to support the development of the automotive security industry. We have developed a platform and a community to share knowledge, communicate through networks, and to build value with collaboration. This is a community for you built by you with the goal to protect our friends and family when using automotive products. If you want to learn more about ASRG or get more involved, please visit our website at www.asrg.io or send us an email at hello at asrg.io. Before we jump into the presentation today, let's get some of the legal stuff taken care of. The views and opinions expressed in this webinar are the views of those that have made them. They do not represent views or opinions of ASRG and are to be considered as informational. The use of this information is to be used by the individual and or organization at their own risk. Hello, I am Claudio Davino. I am a, a project manager leader in Teoresi, and I've been working as an automotive engineer uh, for eight years. Today, we are going to show uh, how autonomous driving has enabled the, uh, the need to, to require more severe um, cybersecurity tests. In particular, it requires more severe uh, fuzzing test procedure. Today we are going to show our idea for automating FADS testing for automotive electronic control units. In particular we will talk about the, the standard ISO 21434 and how procedures are defined and how they are uh, implemented. In the last uh, uh, decades um, we saw two big trends in automotive. We saw autom autonomous driving and the connected car. Uh, it is estimated that in 2013, at least the 70% of cars will be at least at SAE uh, level 4. Uh, we saw that the more the SAE uh, level, the more autom autonomous will be um, controls and actuation. In, a, um, in a cars with big amount of uh, uh, actuation and controls, it is very, um, uh, very important uh, for, uh, for car makers that no hacker can, uh, can access to the vehicle and uh, take control of actuators. Uh, today it's, uh, it is uh, much more critical uh, as, uh, as cars are also connected. Our cars today also have different, um, different uh, infotainment uh, modules that are directly connected on the internet. We can uh, uh, list uh, uh, three examples. For, we, we can talk about autonomous parking, that is a, a, a useful uh, functionality that allows um, customers to park easily as well as uh, autonomous emergency brake. It is a safety fun functionality that allow car stop uh, autonomously in case of an accident. And of course, we already know cruise, cruise control or the newer functionalities, adaptive cruise control. All these functionalities, of course, act on uh, controls and actuators. Autonomous braking, for example, acts on electric powered steering. Autonomous emergency brake, of course, acts on uh, braking systems, and adaptive cruise control acts on, on engine. If uh, an hacker takes control of our car, it can access directly to all these controllers. Now, let's take a look at the new standard ISO SAE 21434. This is a new cybersecurity standard born in 2021. It proposed cybersecurity measures for the development life cycle of road vehicles. The standard is made of different parts. Starting from 
generic uh, consideration, uh, it presents all the cyber security pro pro procedures that a, that a car maker should implement. Management of cyber security uh, is, uh, the, is one of the sections of 21.434 ISO standard and describes the organizational objective regarding cyber security and at the organizational strategy. Uh, uh, section 6 of the standard is uh, about risk assessment methods and introduced different, uh, um, different procedures like TAR analysis and EVITA methods. Section 7, concept phase, determines the cyber security relevant systems. The most important part of the standard for our um, purpose is product development. Product development is split in three parts, system development phase, hardware development phase, software development. After the design development of new, new product, the, sec, the, the ISO standard concentrates on production and at the least, at the last but not the least, on support processes. The standard act at different steps of the V cycle of a, an eco development life cycle. Life cycle. Our, we will uh, uh, focus our attention uh, mainly on uh, software test, which is on the rising side of the V cycle, in particular at, uh, at level 6 of our space model. In this uh, section, we will concentrate our attention on penetration testing as well as FADS testing. Now, let's take a look at the most important part for car maker, for ECU producer of the standard ISO 21434, which is uh, production development. In particular, we will, talk our, we will focus our intention on uh, software tests. Car manufacturers now have to uh, provide advanced security tests for each software component. In particular, they should uh, perform three different uh, kind of tests. Penetration testing, vulnerability scanning and FADS testing. Integrating FADS testing into uh, continuous improvement, continuous development procedures help car makers to achieve the standard uh, objective. FADS testing enables them to cope with the growing dependency in automotive software. A FADS has three key components. A poet that creates the malformed input of the test case. A courier that delivers the test case to the target software. An oracle to detect if a failure has occurred in the target. Let's take a look at this image where a very simple prototype of Fazer is, uh, is shown. Here we can see that uh, uh, a module, that can be a software module or an hardware module named Fazer, creates automatic random input to, the, to a system under test. In this case, our system under test is a, an electronic control unit for car maker. As we know, Electronic control unit often communicates on CAN bus, but also new, new ECU also use automotive Ethernet and also flex ray. We will focus our attention on this uh, example, on this prototype, on CAN bus. In order to check if uh, uh, ECU react correctly to the, to the Fazer input, we have to monitor its output. In particular, we have to monitor the uh, some crash event. The very simplest uh, Fazer only accept to check crash event monitor. In our uh, section today, we will uh, uh, present 
a little more complicated fuzzer that includes output monitor and pre-filtered input condition. EQFAZ testing classing approach has different limits. In particular, with a classic fuzzer test, we don't have any idea of which is the coverage of test that we are able to perform. And we cannot uh, uh, compare different fuzzer solutions for different uh, car maker or for different supplier. In, and also, we can only uh, check if a crash event has occurred. In our solution, we are adding some, diff some module step by step in order to improve a classic FADS tested solution. First, first module that we can add on our FADSER architecture is an output monitor. An output monitor is a, a simple way to check the output of the issues. As we said, uh, issues communicate on CAN, CANFD, Automotive Ethernet and so on. We will focus, we will do an example in this, uh, in this webinar by using a CAN. We will check the output variable of uh, an issue. Another module that we will add to our FADSER test is a report module. This is very useful to understand or at least to estimate which is the, the test coverage of our FADSER architecture. In this way we can compare different FADSER architecture and we can also create a report to be shared with the uh, with the car maker. Uh, now uh, let's uh, go in a more practical aspect. Uh, we are uh, going to see now how we implemented this theoretical aspect. In particular we uh, for first thing we created a virtual issue. We created a virtual issue on a Ubuntu machine uh, and we created a, a proto of the fuzzer on another Ubuntu machine. As you can see here in this, uh, in this architecture, uh, our Ubuntu machine will implement some driver of our supplier named Intrepid. Either fuzzer and uh, virtual echo use a CAN interface. These CAN interface are connected each other by a simple cable and, uh, uh, and uh, a resistor that uh, is for uh, uh, adapt the impedance line. We can do a simple implementation. Instead of using two Ubuntu machines, we can use an only one Ubuntu machine. On this Ubuntu machine, we are going to, to implement the ECU under test and the fuzzer with only a driver, only one driver intrepid and with the two interfaces. Our CAN interfaces will be an intrepid value CAN 3. This uh, device has uh, two CAN interface, so we can use uh, the, on only one device and uh, put the two CAN interfaces in communication with each other via via loopback uh, uh, connection. This was only an example of the devices that we want to, to use. Uh, there are different uh, solutions that could also be okay for the example. We could have uh, used also Intrepid Neo VI Fire 2 or a simple vector can case. Now let's uh, see how Intrepid driver can be installed on an Ubuntu machine. In order to install Intrepid driver on a simple Linux machine, we can follow a very useful guide that we can find on the internet. Uh, this example is, um, uh, is on a Raspberry, but it is also valid for each Linux machine. We have to follow this simple uh, example starting downloading the drivers 
compiling the drivers and inserting new modules in the kernel. Once we in, uh, installed the new modules in the kernel, uh, we can find a new network interface that we can find very easily in our system and uh, that allows us to use CAN as a, as a simple socket. I have already installed the driver on my Ubuntu machine following the, uh, the guide. Now let's take a look at how create the, the link with the socket CAN. We will create two links, one for ECU, another one for Fazer. In particular, in this example, CAN0 and CAN1 will be connected to each other by a, a real wire, without any other connection. If we want to see if everything uh, went well, we have only to, to type infoconfig and check that the two new network interfaces have been created. Now let's take a look at some example. I can use the command can dump to start receiving can messages on one side and using can send on the other side in order to send some can message. Now let's take a look at the example in the other direction. We can send a message on CAN0 and receiving on CAN1. Another useful command is CANGEN. This command allows to create random traffic. We are not going to use CANGEN in order to create our fuzzer, but we will create a specific Python program that allows us to be more precise and efficient in creating random CAN traffic. Now let's take a look at our example in more practical aspect. First thing, we are going to show how we created our ECU under test. We used Python in order to emulate a virtual ECU. We implemented a very simple uh, requirement for, uh, for Python. In this example, we have four functionalities. The first one is uh, uh, an uh, opening connection of our ECU. After we have a, a stored uh, function that allows the user to, to store a secret code inside the ECU. Then we can ask to the, to the ECU to publish the secret code and at the last we can close the connection. The main requirement of this issue is that uh, the issue should uh, answer to the secret code request only if the connection was already opened. If we run the example, we can see a very essential graphical user interface. Now, let's image to send some message to our ECU under test. First thing, we are going to 
open connection in a, uh, in a can receiving in order to check what, what uh, echo is going to send back. Then we send the command to open the connection, which is 101. As you can see, connection is open. Now, let's image to store a secret code inside the connection. Now, let's ask to the issue to communicate its secret code with the command 103. The issue answer back with the secret code. Now, let's close the connection. Let's make just another example just sending another open connection command and uh, check again that the issue is uh, responding back the secret code. At last, let's close the connection again. Now, let's make another example where we are sending a different command. In this case, issue should not uh, respond anything. Now let's take a look at our Fuzzer prototype. Also Fuzzer prototype is developed in Python. The main core of this uh, Python program is uh, the, the, the message generation. We use a randomic function in order to generate statistical uh, independent uh, arbitration ID. The same we did for byte code of the message uh, of the can message. The can message is sent periodically every 100 milliseconds. Let's run the example. Also in this case we have a very essential uh, graphical interface. In this graphical interface we can uh, select the minimum arbitration ID and the maximum arbitration ID. We can also select the, the data length code of each can message. Let's try the first running with uh, an only one ID, 101. Let's open the connection in order to check the message sent by the father. Start the father. And uh, as you can see, we are receiving the message with arbitration ID 101 and with byte code uh, randomically. As soon as you stop the father, you can see a simple report. This report allows to understand how long was the simulation, in this case 20 seconds, and how many fuzzes it sends, in this case 200. We can also perform zoom on it and check that only one arbitration ID was sent for all the CAN messages. Now, let's take a look at another example. We can choose a differ uh, different range for arbitration ID, in this case a wider range, and a wider range also for data length code. Now, let's go stopping the fuzzer. In this case, we can see the report with the new father added. We reach 38 seconds of testing 
and about 400 fatses. Let's take a look at our example of output monitor. Our monitor is a, a very simple functionality. We have only to check uh, which message our ECU under testing is sending back. So, after uh, launching either the fuzzer and uh, ECO under test, we are going to start the fuzzer again. Let's open the connection of the fuzzer. In this top uh, terminal, we are going to check if ECU is going to, to answer back on CAN, mess, on CAN bus. Let's run the full fuzzer procedure. Up to now, our ECU is not uh, answering back. It means that none of these fuzzes is triggering any uh, functionalities of the ECU. But uh, let's make the fuzzer go on and uh, complete all the procedure. This is the last part of the, of the example where almost uh, three minutes passed, and uh, let's see the results. Our fuzzes last 140 seconds and uh, uh, 1,300 fuzzes. As uh, you can see, ECU was uh, triggered by our fuzzes. It means that, uh, that uh, the ECU has a vulnerability. In fact, the connection was opened. But now the problem is why the, uh, the ECU has an opened connection? Is it for a real requirement or is it for a vulnerability? That's how the question that we are going to, to respond. Now let's take a look at the last functionality that we want to add to our proto -fatzer. We named this functionality Simple Filter. This functionality is a very simple concept. It, uh, it is for avoid that the fuzzer sends a valid command to the ECU, because we want to simplify output monitoring processing. Inside the fuzzer, there, are, there can happen also real command. It, it means command that the ECU can uh, receive as, a, as a for valid, because they are, they are part of requirement. Here, in this example, we are going to use our fuzzer uh, in, a, in a particular way. Let's try, for example, to use the, the range for arbitration ID that starts with 101 and finish with 103. As you can see here, 101, 102, 103 are valid command for ECU. It means that our ECU answer back with, uh, with the command on monitoring output. And it's also normal that the ECU uh, respond back with the secret code. But if we want to perform our FATS procedure avoiding this uh, this uh, ID, we can do two 
two ways. We can follow two ways. The first is uh, choosing a range ID different for the one that uh, that we already know um, is a valid range for the issue. But uh, non, uh, it is not always possible. So we are trying to, to develop another functionality in, a, in, a, our, fun, in our fuzzer that allows to exclude the sequences. In this case, we are going to, to program our fuzzer in order to exclude the sequences 101 and 102. Let's take a look at the result. On our fuzzer monitoring, sorry, in our uh, fuzzer report, we can see that no sequence 101-102 have been provided to the fuzzer. Of course, this is only a simple example, and our intention is to improve this functionality. For example, adding other excluded sequences or making them more complex. We can add uh, sequence longer. We can add uh, um, sequence that also includes a, a modification of byte code or on data land code. Okay, we come to conclusion. In this webinar, we saw uh, our proof of concept of FAT test procedure for uh, electronic control unit in automotive. Starting from a classic approach of a fuzzer of ISO SI 21434, we, we proposed different modules. Output mon monitor module that allow us to understand if the ECU also uh, act as an actuator besides crash events. A statistic report module that allow us to understand the test coverage of the, our fuzzer and uh, uh, to compare different fuzzer procedures. And uh, a filter module uh, that uh, allows to make uh, easier the post-procedure uh, operations. Of course, we, today we just presented our idea of a, a way to perform a fuzzer test on electronic control unit and provided a feasibility study. Our intention is to implement a deliverable and a validated tool chain. I hope you can find this little contribution uh, useful and uh, I hope you, uh, you to receive your feedback, your contribution and your advice. Thanks for watching. Thank you.